It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's weekly media roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyd, and the show, 5.45 Live. On deck tonight, uh, we'll take a look at the flash floods from yesterday that closed Elm Street. Plenty of footage there. Plus, we'll talk about the controversial Dummerston Putney Park and Ride and get footage from all of the BABB uh, downtown revitalization hearings this week. And a calendar update in there as well, plus the regional education district from the Leland, Leland and Gray Townsend area, all that and more. We're going to do it in 15 minutes or heck, even a little bit less, so stick with us right here on 545 Live. It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News. Ah! 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 Welcome back to this Friday the 13th edition of 5.45 Live. Uh, that footage there from the last time we had a Friday on the 13th of the month. Thanks to Frederick Noyes and Nolan Edgar, uh, both part of the 5.45 Live team for uh, many an age, helping put together that piece. Uh, We'll move on now and uh, talk headlines here on a more serious note. Uh, as yesterday, severe thunderstorms uh, left residents following along on Facebook, uh, concerned that this could be another Irene uh, with uh, Flat Street in particular, one of Irene's uh, hardest hit areas for downtown Brattleboro, uh, seeing some severe flooding. However, uh, Elm Street was the only street to close uh, with problems on the bridge. We were out in the rain to get a full special, uh, as well as uh, gathering footage on Facebook and from the Brattleboro Reformers Tout.com channel. We've put it all together. Let's take a look at the clip. Five forty-five 45 Lives, Roland Boyden reporting from Elm Street, where flash flooding has caused the street to close. However, this is just the bridge section uh, that connects Elm to Flat Street. I am, of course, standing uh, on the spot where, uh, now two years ago during Hurricane Irene, the entire parking lot at the bottom of Flat Street was flooded as uh, this stretch of uh, the road flat and into Frost Street became one of the hardest hit areas in Brattleboro, uh, right at the base of this bridge here that's been closed. Uh, all other roadways remain open, and uh, the similarities to Tropical Storm Irene end there. This is uh, no cause for concern. However, it is a uh, cause for caution. So uh, be safe and smart out there as you're making your uh, drive home. Officials will uh, post publicly when this stretch of Elm Street, including the bridge that connects Frost and Canal. And in the meantime, I'm 545 Lives, Roland Boyden for BCTV. Thanks for watching. Now, among the videos captured by the reformers Kayla Rice and posted to the uh, tout.com channel mentioned previously, that's tout.com slash brat reformer, uh, was an interview with Stanley Line of Line Motorsports, uh, one of the merchants hardest hit by the flat street flooding of Tropical Storm Irene. And he was none too happy to see the waters ebbing towards his establishment on flat street once more. Let's take a look at that clip. Okay, my name's Stanley Line. Uh, this is my motorcycle shop. We're on flat street. And uh, this is uh, just got done with a wicked, as you can see, I'm soaked to the bone, uh, rainstorm that actually flooded the street again. And as the photographs you took will tell, show, that flooded the silt went to the shop again. So for us, it's uh, it's a week. It'll take me a week to take everything out of there, clean everything out again. And. Uh, the big problem is that the storm drains aren't large enough to take the water. And this is Flat Street, which is the lowest point of Radbrook. We'll move on and talk headlines, including the park and ride, as mentioned. But first, uh, a look back to this Wednesday, which saw flags at half-mast around the community as it marked yet another anniversary for September 11th. Let's roll our clip. The news wasn't clear in the beginning, really. We couldn't figure out what happened. I turned on the TV and uh, I thought, oh, geez, what, a, what an accident. How could how could the pilot have have done that? You know, being from small town Brattleboro and watching New York City firefighters, uh, just wondering how they're going to attack this thing, you know, 80 stories high. I, I'm proud of the American people, and, and I, my heart goes out to the families that have suffered. 
Moving on, it was not one but two development review boards that gathered together this week to discuss a controversial park and ride proposed by VTrans for exit 4 off I-91 and with it landing on the putney Dummerston town line. Uh, the respective development review boards of those municipalities gathered together for a joint hearing uh, to entertain concerned residents uh, wondering just how necessary an expanded park and ride is. Well, it's anyone's guess which town has more pension for controversy, Dumberston or Putney. But with a new VTrans I-91 commuter park and ride proposed for uh, an area just over the town line, it's got both municipalities involved. While doing the quarters, the area around exit 4 has come up as what do we do? What's the best use of this land, especially where we're going from Dumberston and transitioning to Putney Village? How do we best do that? project needs to be scaled back. These are our, our funds and work, after all, as taxpayers. Well, I've got some real concerns over, uh, primarily over the, scape, the scope of, the, of this project. And a special joint meeting of both uh, development review boards from the municipalities of Putney and Dummerston met at the Putney Firehouse behind me yesterday to discuss the upcoming project with members of VTrans. When we go inside, we'll open up a public meeting and you'll have um, ample opportunity to uh, bring the issues that you may have thought about in the site visit uh, and discuss them in public. And Our main function was to attempt to get the interstate interchanges that had surfaced as high priorities in each of the regions, and that's how this project came about. There are people all over the state right now wanting park and rides, and the list is long. And if we turn this down right now, we're going to go down to the bottom of the list again, and it's going to be another 20 years before we see anything here. Moving on, the Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development has partnered with Building a Better Brattleboro to form the Downtown Action Team, a group uh, seeking input from the community on revitalizing downtown. It's a big subject lately, especially with Vermont Yankee uh, Energy Nuclear's announcement that they would close their plant effective uh, quarter four of 2014, leaving everyone wondering just how uh, the community's economy will help pick up the slack. Building a Better Brattleboro hosted not one but three forums on that very topic this week, including one for uh, local business and government leaders at the River Garden and two for the public at the Latches. Hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez was at all three to gather footage for this clip. This is part of what we're calling the Vermont Downtown Action Team, and it's a direct result of what happened two years ago in uh, downtown Brattleboro with uh, Tropic Storm Irene. And uh, we all know that recovery is not something that happens instantaneously, that this is a long and drawn out process. Recovering from a tragedy or a disaster is a marathon. What we're doing the next couple days is a sprint. We are doing in, a, in about a three-day period a very rapid exercise with you all and we hope by 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning uh, we can really uh, delight you with what we show. What we have done, looked at, talked to, and again thank you so much for your thoughts, thank you so much for your comments, and this won't be the end. Now the real task is going to be helping you guys look at this strategize and implement. You can see all those BABB Downtown Action Team Community Revitalization Forums uh, in their entirety at BrattleboroTV.org, streaming with our video on demand. All right, then with that, uh, we'll move on and talk red. The Regional Education District, now approved by the state and looking to go forward uh, after a, a series of upcoming community forums, should shed some more light on it for residents uh, of towns in the Wyndham Central Supervisory Union who could find themselves without a local school board as the uh, proposed district uh, would cover K through 12 in all of the towns in the Wyndham Central Supervisory Union with one school board with uh, appointed representatives from each town, something that has the current uh, superintendent of the district, Stephen John, and Leland and Gray Board President, Emily Long, very excited for the potential for cooperation and teamwork that this board should uh, bring to each of these communities. If it goes through, the board member's situation will be set up almost like exactly like Leland and Gray. In other words, you're going to have a great big board, and every town will have representation. And I think Newfane's set up with four members, Jamaica's set up with two, Brookline will be set up with one, Townsend with three, and if Wyndham joins, Wyndham would have one. 
if, if everything gets approved by the State Board of Education and this vote is going forward, people who are interested in serving on a, a regional education or Wyndham Central Education District Board, you have to have your petition in probably in the beginning of uh, yeah, September. Yeah, I would say shoot before September, the beginning of September. September. Right right September. September. Right. 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 Yeah. September. Right. Right. School what, what boards that presently exist no. still exist until through no. June 30th. Oh, then I mean, Leland and Gray. Leland and Gray, just like all the other um, school district boards, will oh. go away. All right. Uh, with that, we'll wrap up a full 15-minute weekend edition of 545 Live here by taking a look at our newest feature, our interactive online video calendar, released each Thursday at youtube.com slash brattlebro TV and included as part of our 545 Live broadcast right here on Channel 8. You'll get a chance to look at some of the week's upcoming events. Uh, it'll be hosted in front of the big board by none other than yours truly uh, and include video spotlights uh, for each of the events highlighted. Let's roll into it. Welcome to another edition of BCTV's weekly interactive online video calendar. When we take a look at Saturday morning here, the 14th of September, uh, with more clickable links. We're uh, all of you looking to partake in the Brattleboro Area Walk-In Clinic's annual Walk, Run, and Roll Road Race fundraiser. Head from 7 to 8 a.m. to complete an official check-in for the 5K Walk or Run. While those of you looking to roll will have uh, until 7.30 a.m. to check in for the 35-mile cycling course. Uh, as is the case each year, all the proceeds from the event go to support the walk-in clinic, which offers free medical service to the community each week. Service more desperately vital than ever as the state and the nation prepares for a health care overhaul. Let's take a look. Take a big jump forward in the calendar here to look at uh, this upcoming Wednesday, six days from now, uh, the 18th, uh, with the event mentioned earlier. But uh, first, a quick reminder and a uh, point to the clickable link here that the Brattleboro Farmers Market uh, is going to continue through October. So still plenty of time each Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. by the Exit 2 Bridge uh, to browse local produce, food and wares, uh, hang out. Uh, listen to the live music again all the way through October. All right, and with that, uh, we'll jump ahead here to uh, the 18th, the afternoon of the 18th, and talk about our next event. As the Center for Cardiovascular Health at Brattleboro Memorial Hospital, we'll partner with the Brattleboro Museum and Art Center for an open house and art show dubbed Art for the Heart from 5.30 to 7 on the top floor of the Richards Building, where members of the public can not only enjoy the local art curated by the museum's Mara Williams, and dine and hors d'oeuvres from the North End Butcher, but also learn more about the Center for Cardiac Care and uh, the hospital's flagship surgeon, Dr. Mark Burke, uh, and the new model they're setting for the community. My name is Dr. Mark Burke. I'm a cardiologist at Brattleboro Cardiology. I have a large role in terms of trying to prevent illness as well as diagnosing current illness. Mostly, I don't save someone's life the person whose life needs to be saved, saved their own life. So giving people that kind of control is really gratifying for me. That does it for a full broadcast here on 545 Live. But remember, we'll be back next week, Friday, 545 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. In the interim, you can subscribe to us at youtube.com slash TV and get uh, all the updates that happen in the form of web releases throughout the week uh, and all the way through into our full 15-minute broadcast a week from today. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Enjoy the bevy of community events this weekend. We'll see you next week.